Hello, everybody. It's that college football guy here with another video. I just got into Louisville, Kentucky, and um, <laughs> cell service here I'm spending the night at is absolutely atrocious. So this is recorded Thursday, just before Thursday evening, but it probably is not going to get uploaded. Probably won't be able to upload it until tomorrow, Friday morning. Um, so be that as it may. Um, you saw that the Michigan and Notre Dame, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Notre Dame, get this out the way first. National Labor Relations Board going after them, just like Dartmouth. Greg Flugar, peek around the corner, did a phenomenal video on this part on, on a live show on this, as well as a bunch of other things, including some stuff about the Pac-2, um, who the next two are coming in for that one that he leaked, which I'll give a spoiler alert for that one. According to his sources, it's... Uh, Colorado State, San Diego State, and Fresno State, which is the same three I've been hearing are the top three that they may be taking if they take three of the Mountain West. It's those three. But he goes in a lot more detail on that, on Notre Dame, and a bunch of everything, other things. I've, I've linked them on X when I did, uh, when it happened while I was driving. So I was able to listen to him while I was driving. But um, yeah, he's got a video on it. So go ahead and check that one out. It's a great listen. Uh, <laughs> he has a lot of information in there. Everybody's reported about, I'm not going to do any more about Notre Dame because it's just basically it's they're going after them for interference. Same. It's going to be a lot more explained later on, but basically they're interfering with people's individuals' rights to make money, which sounds to me like NIO. Um, limited information pretty much now, but there's more. He has more information in his video, so I'm giving him a shout out and have please go check out Greg, peek around the corner. And check out his video on that. Everybody's talked about Michigan. Michigan, a lot of Michigan fans, I have some on this channel, are saying, oh, keep on there, but oh, everything's done. No, no, no. This, I got DM'd on, <laughs> on Twitter on X. So it's all done. Like, no. This is the 2021 COVID dead period stuff that finally got done in 2024. Now, you're on probation. What are the deal with this? You've got scholarships, and I'm not going to go through the full disclosure. Everything is done. You can look it up yourself and take a look at that. That's not what I'm here for on this. We all saw that. Now, they're on probation for, I think it's three years. Now, here's a little thing about that you guys don't understand. And I'll give you speaking from experience as a Tennessee fan. When the Jeremy Pruitt fiasco happened, which also happened in 2020, ironically, ours got settled a year earlier, um, or several years earlier, actually, um, because of what happened with Jeremy Pruitt, was we helped the NCAA, we didn't fight them, unlike Harbaugh, and Harbaugh, of course, getting a one-year show cause, but I doubt he's ever coming back to college football, he'll stay in the NFL until he's ready to retire, so that means nothing, but I will say this, so people are surprised Michigan threw Harbaugh under the bus. Why wouldn't they? He's not coming back. He's not your coach. Blame it all on him. Tennessee in a way did that. But here's the one thing about Tennessee I'm bringing up. The whole reason why they went full scorched earth against the NCAA because of the Nico deal. Which a lot of the universities, I heard a lot of people, you know, making fun of Tennessee. Hey, you got busted for your guy. Especially Uncle Lou. And it came out that a couple of the Georgia players were possibly under investigation, too, because of NIL deals. Anybody making more than $2 million a year was being investigated, which was its own set of problems. And Virginia and Tennessee went and did their thing and basically took the gloves off for everybody. So everybody's making fun of them, but privately, everybody in the SEC is going, thank you very much for taking care of that for us. Big Ten was doing the same thing. I'm pretty sure that, that uh, the <laughs> university president won't have to worry about paying for many dinners while she's out on the road for a while. Um, but... Tennessee was told, you offend again during your probation, your repeat offender. Now, they got declared because of what happened of lack of institutional control and wins were stripped away. Well, guess what? Now, Michigan is under probation. And they cannot have anything happen in the next three years 
or they're labeled as a repeat offender. Hmm. That means that the investigation, they have to pray they can stall this thing out. But with what happened and it being what it is and and FBI being involved in, uh, FBI is investigating, investigating Michigan, but I don't know if it's related to this, but that's still going to come part of this. And this may, because of that, get expedited. But basically, Michigan gets nailed again during their probation. And the offense, it's not when they get nailed. It's when the offense occurred in conjunction with that. It's kind of, a, it's like, like, okay, is it three years from the time the offense occurred or is it three years from the time that as far as I know, if this, I've gotten contrary, contradictory opinions on this. As far as I knew, because of what the Tennessee situation was, once you're on probation, it's three years from that date, or four years, or two years, or one year, or five, or whatever it is. You know, when that has been forced, it's from that date, not from anything previous. What I don't know is the offense that you're accused of. If the offense occurred during that period or when it's resolved in that period. That's the one thing I don't know. I'm assuming based upon the NCAA's bloodthirst that it probably means it occurred in that period from the time it was resolved, which that occurred before this was even resolved. So it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Because if Michigan gets nailed, I believe they get nailed as repeat offender. The repeat offender, they drop the hammer. The Tennessee rumored, because there was no proof, no investigation, because of being a repeat offender, half the scholarship's gone, bowl ban for three to five years, staff reductions, Almost no off-campus visits. Recruiting is nothing. Practice is limited. A severe hit. And Coach Heupel possibly could have gotten a one-year show cause. Because it happened on his watch. Um, that's potentially, rumoredly, what was going to happen. But that's not the case. That's gone away. But the problem is that was NIL related. NIL is off the books now. The cheating scandal, which is what's going on here, that is what's pending with possible FBI involvement. Now, only in Tennessee was they were already stripped of wins. If they would have gotten nailed again, every win in the Hypel era pretty much would have been wiped off the face of the earth. They would have erased everything, which would have meant no wins for, what, seven years? Michigan gets nailed as repeat offender. They're stripped of wins from the affected time period. They said, we're not going to strip anybody of a national championship. If you strip them of their wins, they're not national champs. I'm sorry. And that championship, if it does stay, is I have a funny feeling if they get nailed, they're going to fight tooth and nail to stop them from being a, stop it from being a, um, a, how do I say this? It's not a death penalty, a, I almost want to call it the Reggie Bush clause, because Reggie Bush got USC stripped of a championship, but would this cause the national championship to be stripped? Win's going to go away. How ironic would it be that uh, you've beaten Ohio State X number of years in a row, when, I forget, I think three years when it is now, three years in a row? And you're going to be stripped of every one of those wins? That's the potential that they're facing. Now, 
if Michigan was smart, which based upon what they've done so far, they've been anything but, the athletic director, how does this moron still have a job? I mean, seriously, how does this, how does this guy still have a job? He has been in, they're, they're under investigation for multiple departments in the athletic department. It's not just football. It's across the board. It's everything. Damn near. Everything's under investigation. It's an across the board problem, which definitely means lack of institutional control, which means if all this gets done, that athletic director may not have a job because the NCA may say, get rid of them. They said, we can't fire anybody. Uh, actually, yeah, they can arrange that. But I need you to tell me what you think here. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to say this. Michigan gets nailed again. Well, based on this flat out saying, if Michigan gets nailed again, you think they're going to get stripped of the national championship, even though the NCA said no? But the problem is, the NCA said, we're never going to do that again based upon this, but this compared to what Reggie Bush did is nothing. Now, if they would have said, Michigan, we're stripping you of the national title, but because of what Reggie Bush did with merchandising, we're reinstating USC's championship because it wasn't as egregious as this, would you be okay with that? Because... I honestly think USC's championship should be reinstated. Because that was Reggie Bush, not the team. That's all. Well, if one player doesn't, you strip the title. What do you call this? What do you call this? There's a lot of Michigan haters who want the title taken away from them. Um, but, and the main thing is, how long is this going to take to get adjudicated? How long is this going to take? But with the FBI and other things being involved in this, and then there's the and the fact is, is that Harbaugh's not. If you thought Harbaugh was thrown under the bus before, he's gonna get thrown under the bus, backed up, ran over him again, forward and back until the point he's probably under the pavement. Um, they're gonna throw the and Connor Stallions are both gonna be absolutely obliterated in this. Harbaugh getting a 15 year show cause, I'm like he's not coming back. He could care less. He's not gonna cooperate with you. He's not going to appeal it because he doesn't care. He's 60, I believe. What's he coming back to? He can go 10 more years in the NFL and hang it up and be happy if he lasts that long. I mean, it's not exactly like he's not hurting for money between Michigan and, and the L.A. Chargers. He can retire very comfortably. But tell me what you think here about all of this. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Um... If you haven't done it already, do me a favor, smash the like button, hit the thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm, helps the video be seen by more people. Comment on this video. Notre Dame being investigated by National Labor Relations Board. I'm figuring eventually every university is going to get investigated by the National Labor Relations Board unless they make athletes employees, in which case the investigations will stop. But the question is, does an NLRB investigation do anything to you? It doesn't really change. It, Dartmouth it did think for a small university, but for a power school, what would it change? Not much. So does it really have any weight on anything? Is it for all athletes? I mean, let me know what you think about that. And then Michigan. I waited on this one because I wanted to see if anything else came out about Michigan. But basically, like I said, it's, first one came down, the first hammer fell. The little ball peen hammer hit Michigan. There's a 20 pound sledge. We're gonna crack them in the dome here in a little bit. This is gonna hurt a hell of a lot worse. How bad do you think Michigan's gonna get nailed? And how long do you think it's gonna take them to get this done? I'm simply wondering Will the investigation take longer than the probation? Conveniently. Like stall it out to the point where, well, you're not on probation anymore, so we're going to nail you again so you don't get on the, you know, blue blood, a little blue blood bias, a little cakewalk for you. 
stall it out intentionally so that way the probation exasperate. I'm talking out of my I'm talking crazy right now, but I, I don't think that'll happen. I think they're going to get tattooed on this one. As the House of Beer, why don't you let me know down in the comments? Um, share the video if you want to. And for all the new subscribers, thank you for coming in. We're slowly working our way up here. Um, if you like video here, check out some of the other ones I've done. And if you like it, subscribe to the channel. You know, slowly on the crawl up to 1,000. Just past 500, we're slowly getting there, slowly but surely. Um, so thanks again, everybody, for watching. If you want to follow me on X, Twitter, link will be in the description. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Again, if you have any ideas for a video, put it down in the comments. Let's see what they, Damascus, you keep asking for me to do the video about the trophies the rivalry trophies, the rivalry awards that happen for rivalries in college football. I'm going to do that before the start of the season. That video is coming, but it's going to be close to the start of the season when we need to get everybody's mind back and what it needs to be, what the rivalries are going to be, what schools are. We'll be doing the subscriber list at that point also, which is all the schools that if you're a subscriber of your school, shout it out in the comments if that happens. But that's going to happen, you know, I'll probably open that up 1st of July. And we'll start going from there on that one and make a subscriber list of schools. Or I might do 1st of August, but I'll talk to you guys more about that when we get close. We get a ways till that happens. Um, and for those of you who are not turning in here, what the hell is the subscriber list? Okay. Basically what it is is that last two years I've done this where I did prediction videos for everybody. This is last two years, ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-12, SEC, the American, the Mountain West, and the Sun Belt. And I don't mean like, okay, they're going to go 10-2. The example, 2022 Tennessee. I had them going 9-3. and three. I had them losing to Florida, to Alabama, and to Georgia. Well, they lost to Georgia, but they beat Alabama and they beat Florida, but they lost to South Carolina. That means I got three games wrong on that schedule. So I went 9-3. and three on the schedule, predicting wins and losses every game for all of them. Plus, last season we threw in, what was it, Notre Dame, Toledo, and Middle Tennessee State for subscribers. Additional schools, if you, those conferences weren't mentioned. You had additional school that wasn't already in those conferences, you could shout it out and I'll throw it in. And I also did a top 25 for my top 25, as well as a rankings for all the subscriber schools, an independent top 20, or actually top all the rankings of the schools. Just in case you're not in the top 25, could you be a champion? Like, last season, subscribe to Michigan. Michigan was the national champ. Previous year, when Georgia won the title, Georgia wasn't a subscriber. It was actually Fresno State that was the champion because they had finished the season on a long winning streak, plus won the conference champ, make Mountain West Conference Championship, won a bowl game. So it depends on the years here. Not necessarily working that way. But that's going to be down the road. But that gives you an idea of what's going on with this channel. But like I said, a lot of different things going on. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I've rambled long enough. Hope everybody's having a... I'll well, be watching this on Friday, so hope everybody has having a great Friday, even though this is Thursday and it's getting kind of crazy here. So I'll have to figure out something here to do soon. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope you have a great day. And please, be good to each other.